This is a very short video on introduction to multi-degree of freedom systems. Here we see a two degree of freedom system. So this is a two degree of freedom system where this is considered as one mass and this whole thing is considered as another mass. So we find out the displacement x1 and x2 when we consider it as a two degree of freedom system. A similar drilling machine on the right side is modeled as a four degree of freedom system with four lumped mass. So you can see that um, this has one mass and this has the second mass. This whole thing has the um, third mass and this uh, arm has the fourth mass with the column acting as a elastic beam and then it is fixed on to the base. So this is modeled as a um, four degrees of uh, freedom system. So, so this is a two degree and this is a four degree. So higher the degree of systems better would be the model and closer would be the accuracy of the analysis. So here we see a torsional system where we have a compressor, a turbine and a generator which is modeled as uh, three rotors. So this rotor is for the compressor, this rotor is for the turbine and this rotor is for the generator. So it is assumed as a cantilever beam. So when we say cantilever beam, it doesn't mean that uh, no, this shaft cannot rotate. It can rotate. Okay. So this cantilever just means that this whole thing cannot move horizontally. Okay, so rotation is possible and we model in, in this way where uh, there is no movement possible, but rotation horizontal movement is not possible, but rotation is possible. Even when we model for critical speed of shafts, we model it as a simply supported beam or a cantilever beam based on the type of uh, bearing used. So if we model as a cantilever beam, uh, it always means that the shaft can rotate. Okay, so it only means the other movements are restricted, but rotation is still possible. So this is how you model it as a uh, three degree of freedom system. So this rotor has one degree and this rotor is a second degree of freedom. And this third rotor has another degree of freedom. So three degree of freedom system. So what is more important in this vibrations course is we need to understand how to model these systems from a physical system. So if you just learn how to find the natural frequency and how to find the mode shapes out of these things, that is not enough. You need to understand how a physical system like a, a compressor, turbine and generator on a shaft has been modeled as a three degree of freedom system. So that is more important to understand it conceptually. You may understand, you may learn how to find the natural frequency, but um, that is that alone is not enough. You need to learn how to model such systems. Here is an example of an aeroplane modeled as a three degree of freedom system, where the central uh, fuselage portion is uh, modeled as a M2, and this wing portion and this wing portion is modeled as M1 and M3. So here you can see the wings are connected by as uh, springs. So two springs and three mass and X1 and X2 or X3 are the three degrees of uh, freedom. So this is how you model the you know, front portion of an aeroplane in a, into a three degree of freedom system. So all these uh, should not be treated as some rectangular box in which we write simply the M1, M2 and M3. These have a uh, relation with the physical system and that is what is important to be understood. So just don't uh, think that these are some boxes in which we write M1, M2 and M3 and then connect with two springs and you don't know how uh, and why do we do these. So these are actually modeled from physical systems like an aeroplane, drilling machine, any kind of you know, mechanical systems. 
so understanding this is very important after this course maybe after a year or two you may forget how to calculate the natural frequency of a multi degree um, freedom system you may forget dunkerley's method formula or you may forget uh, rayleigh's method uh, formula but what you need to remember even after a year or two or even after five years you need to understand how these physical systems are modeled into such spring and mass and damper if uh, applicable so here we see an aeroplane uh, wing which is modeled into 12 degrees of freedom so previously we saw only 3 degrees of freedom so multi degree of freedom means anything more than 2 degree of freedom is multi degree of freedom so here we see each the wing is divided into 12 lumped masses so lumped mass is discrete um, all systems are continuous system so all these are continuous systems but modeling it as a continuous system is very complex analysis to simplify we consider it as discrete mass and we decide the number of degrees of freedom based on the complexity and accuracy we would like to go to so it the in this case it is modeled as 12 degree of freedom so you can see here the degree of freedom is uh, 12 and these are the first three mode shapes these are the first three mode shapes so a 12 degree of freedom system would have 12 natural frequencies this is an example of a machine placed on the uh, mounted on the floor so you see that there are uh, three mass one is the mass of the floor one is the mass of the uh, base and another is the mass of the uh, head tool head so all these three mass is connected by the spring and the damper system so this is for the floor so this is for the uh, floor this is for the um, base and the mounting and this is for the machine tool head so and this f of t is the external force that is a cutting force acting and x1 x2 and x3 are the displacements so it is a 3 degree of freedom system so this is how we model such um, systems into multi degree of freedom system so this video was is a very short uh, introduction to multi degree of freedom systems how we can model physical systems into um, spring mass and uh, damper so in the next uh video classes we will see how to find the natural frequency of the multi degree of freedom systems thank you